So today we're going to be talking about the 2019 movie adaptation for Little Women as well as the book Little Women and how the adaptation did. I will be talking in spoilers for this video because it's all old enough that I feel like it's fine. Um, so let's do it. Starting with characters. So I want to begin by talking about how I felt each of the main cast was portrayed in the movie. And then we're gonna talk about all the differences in the movie, the similarities, and what we'll, we'll, we're gonna talk about. It. So characters first. Um, for our four girls, we have Meg, which I think was one of the biggest changes the movie made. Uh, the book, Little Women, focuses a lot on all the daughters and the movie focused primarily on Joe with the other daughters getting, you know, spotlights as well. And Meg gets a lot of attention in the book. And I think in the movie, she's probably the character that's kind of pushed down the most, which I'm fine with because in the book, she's probably the character that I'm the least, or she's the, the daughter that I'm the least attached to. So I don't really mind her not getting as much spotlight. A lot of, a lot of her character arc, a lot of the things that she went through wasn't even touched on, which is fine because it's a movie, it's gonna be more condensed. But even the things that the movie did highlight, I feel even cut short a little bit. But I do think the essence of who Meg is, what she was learning and how she developed was captured by the movie very well. Beth I think was very, very loyal. I think that in the characterization of her, in the uh, arc that she had, even in staying true to the different struggles she had and, and where she came to being at peace with the fact that she uh, was probably going to die uh, early. She, I think it was all, I really don't have any critiques for Beth. I think that she was characterized perfectly. I think she got a great amount of screen time. I think it's really difficult to characterize a character like Beth because the narrative really helped to solidify how humble and meek she was and how much people learned through just interacting with her and observing her. And it's really hard for a movie to capture that. And I think that this movie captured it really, really well. Amy, I think is my favorite adaptation of all the daughters because I think that who Amy is was captured so perfectly. But also I think that the actress that played her also just brought so much life into her character. And really I feel this way about all of the actresses for Little Women. I think that all four of them brought so much life into the characters, but her especially, Amy's character who is difficult in the book. She's young, she's immature, she is uh, prone to emotional outbursts that can be, that can really harm the people that she loves. She is selfish and has so much growing up to do as the youngest of the four girls. And I think that her, who Amy is with all of her faults is captured perfectly in the movie, but she's also depicted with this um, charm that keeps her from being the villain in people's eyes, which I think is really important because I really don't think that she was the villain in the book. And finally, we have Jo, which I think has the greatest changes to her. Um, I think that I think that Joe, the spirit of who Joe is, is captured beautifully, but also changed a lot. So the movie really, really focuses on her struggling to accept that her family is changing, her sisters are growing older, Meg is getting married, and they're no longer going to all live under this roof in this perfect little family that she has. And that torments her, and she doesn't wanna grow up, she doesn't wanna fall in love, she doesn't want to have the life that everyone expects her to have. She wants to remain childlike and boyish, and she wants to continue to romp around with her friends and with her family, and she doesn't want the pressures of growing up and she doesn't want her family to grow apart in any way. That's all present. Every bit of that is present in the book, but it's not her main conflict. It's not her main thing that she agonizes over. It comes up and she addresses it and she works through it, but it's not so prevalent to the story. They've really taken that and made it her main conflict in the movie, which is very different. Also, Joe's entire arc from beginning to end of the movie is different than it is in the book, which I will talk about when I'll talk about at the end of the video because I have a lot of opinions on that. 
For the story itself, um, there's some really bold choices made in this movie. While I think that this is one of the most loyal adaptations I have seen in that a lot of the scenes in the movie are pulled directly from the book. Line for line, page for page, the actors are reciting from the book. And even a lot of the changes that are made from scene to scene, a lot of it is, okay, this big confrontation happens at Meg's wedding instead of happening, you know, quite a bit later after he comes home from college isn't about to go off on holiday. Um, the the Laurie and Joe con confrontation when Laurie professes his love to her in the book, it's not at the wedding. It's a long time later and it's because he's about to go off and he wants her to come with him and he wants to stop pushing down his feelings. Same conflict, very similar lines, very similarly done, really well ad adapted just at a different time for them. And there's a lot of things like that where things are really well adapted it's just kind of two things are mushed together or some stuff is just left out and they just pull one thing from it and put it somewhere else and I think that all of that is completely fine it's a movie not a book and stuff has to be cut and I think that what they chose to cut is actually I, I, I agree with pretty much all of it there's a lot of stuff that was cut a lot of day-to-day -day living life with them learning lessons with them um, Meg getting married and having her her first First fight with her husband, her first mistake when they invite someone or when he invites someone home and, and she's not ready and she's had a really hard day. Uh, Meg with the twins and learning to be a new mother and uh, learning to still care for her relationship and not just let her mothering the twins become the only thing that she focuses on. The plays that Joe writes and them acting them out, it's shown on screen, but we don't actually go through the plays like we do in the book. There's a lot of things that get cut, and I totally understand why, and I completely agree with it, because the biggest moments of the book are depicted. They're just moved around a little bit or conflated together, which I think was totally fine. Lori, I think, is adapted amazingly as well. I actually like movie Lori better than book Lori, and I love book Lori, but book Lori is, um, I think, has a little bit less to him, where movie Lori, uh, there are some changes, there are some big differences. There's something, at least for me, there's something that has a little bit extra charm to him there. He's very flawed in the book and he's very flawed in the movie and I would argue even more flawed, at least more in your face flawed in the movie than the book. But I also think that he redeems himself in the movie so well. He's a character, I think I think seeing him and Amy brought to life are my two favorite two favorite ones. And it's not just the bond between the sisters, but it's the bond between Lori and the sisters, the bond between them and their mother. Um, the, the, the characters, the way they work off of each other and, and the way, or rather the actors, the way that they work off of each other and play off of each other and how close they seem, it all is just, ca it's so perfect. Even Joe and Lori, their very intimate, close friendship and, and the friction between them of Lori truly caring for her in, in a very different way. And in, in the book, as well as the movie, Joe isn't um, she isn't playing with that. She isn't trying to tease him or flirt with him or give him part of her heart and and go back and forth on him. She's very direct. She is not trying to play with this boy's heart. She loves him dearly as a friend and as a brother, and she does not lead him on in either uh, medium. And I think that the way the movie captured their bond and their love for each other and how a little bit off balance it is and how Joe really tries hard not to let it be off balance, yet she can't help it. Um, I think it's it's so perfectly portrayed and, and the movie, I'm saying the word captured too much, I'm trying to stop myself, but I'm, I'm gonna use it again. The movie captures their bond and relationship exactly right. One really huge change that happened is that in the book everything is linear and in the movie we go back and forth in timelines and I'm so glad that I watched this with friends because I'm color deficient and I don't notice slight changes in colors and um, I would never have noticed that there was a filter 
showing that we're in a flashback, showing that we're in the past, and then it's like a little bit brighter in the present time. I never would have noticed that on my own. I really had to look hard for it in the movie, and I do think that it could have been, we could have done more to make the past and present timelines more distinct, because it can get confusing. But I love this choice. I love this choice for the movie, because it makes the movie more engaging, it keeps the pacing to be really snappy, and it gives the opportunity to show these parallels like with uh, Beth's sickness, her sickness as a child and her sickness when she's older, well not as a child, her sickness when she's young and her sickness when she's a little bit older, and showing those two scenes side by side, I felt really added so much impact to it because it shows this family going through this twice and how much it, it, it wears on them. And there were a lot of opportunities like that to show the parallels of the past and the present that are there in the book, but to show them right next to each other and really drive that impact home. However, it does take something away because in the book, it's completely linear. The story is, the whole point of Little Women is growing up alongside these young girls as they grow into Little Women. At the beginning of the book, uh, their father, who's off at the war, fighting in the war, uh, writes them a letter and talks about how he can't wait to get home to his little women and how proud of them he is. And this is right after they had all been sitting around complaining and uh, not being fully contented. And that's, that letter reminds them to not be uh, so, not be looking inward so much and reminding them that they want to grow up to be these little women uh, that their father sees in them. And, and it's them saying, I'm not there yet, I'm flawed, I'm imperfect, but I do want to grow up to be the little women that that my father sees in me. And then in the story, we grow up with them. We go through their mistakes and their trials, and we go through their, their faults and their failings alongside them, and we get to grow up with them and live these lessons with them and learn alongside them to see them become the little women that their father saw in them from the start. But the movie is so filled with its own charm. I think that around every corner with the characters, with the story, with the setting, with the, the, uh, the charm of the book, while it's different in the movie, it captures so much of its own unique charm. The way the characters talk over each other and speak really quickly, especially the sisters, the way that they love each other and, and are so physically affectionate with each other and just understand each other, um, I think while it's different from the book, it, it it is what the book is doing. It shows their unique and incredible bond. You can feel the joy of these characters and how full of life they are no matter which part of the story we're in. We see them laughing and running and, and living life fully, which I think is so important because there's such a unique charm to Little Women that we are capturing the little joys of life. And I think the movie does that. Some little things that they changed that I actually, I actually really liked. Like for instance, um, in the book, Joe stops writing and it's, uh, it's her mom that encourages her to start writing again, but start writing for the family. Write stories for us because Joe says, I don't have any stories left in me. I don't have anything for this anymore. And Marmy says, then write for us because we love your stories. And that's what brings her back into writing and brings her back into uh, being really intent on her novel. And in the movie, it's Beth. It's Beth that tells her, but your stories matter to me. And I actually love that change of the movie because one thing that is really, again, difficult for the movie to capture is the incredible bond that Joe and Beth have in the book. They, Joe takes Beth on as her own. She's the one that cares for her when she's sick. She's the one looking after her. She's the one that sees that Beth isn't getting better when everybody else is trying to believe that she does. She's the one that Beth confides in and says, which she does in the movie too, and says, I don't think that I'm gonna make it through this time. I see myself dying soon and I'm okay with it. I've come to peace with it. And and they their bond, Joe's incredible devoted love to her little sister and to pampering her and caring for her and the pain she experiences when she's unwell and then whenever she dies is 
something that the book does unbelievably well and that I'm I'm really happy with how the book or I'm really happy with how the movie captured it too but it cannot match how close and intimate their bond was in the book and I love that that line of Marmee's was given to Beth because I think that that was really really important for her showcasing how deep and intimate their bond was and how deeply and desperately Joe loved her. One change that I understand why it was done, but I actually don't like, is in uh, Lori with um, Meg. No, what's her name? Amy. My goodness, Lori and Amy. When Amy is off um, doing her travels with Aunt Marge, Marsh, Marsh, and Lori shows up, and in the book, he doesn't stand her up, where she, in the movie he does. She waited for hours and she was upset with him and he was, he had been drinking and he was flirting with these other girls and it like, it wasn't a good situation. None of that's in the book. He shows up, he's there for her, he's doting on her and kind and sweet and the charming Lori that we know and the conflict between them is a much more subtle one in that Lori, oh, after being rejected by Joe and after uh, not having the life that he always hoped that he would have, he's become lethargic and lazy and uh, a little bit grumpy and he's just not his charming, hardworking, lovable boy. Um, instead, he's become, you know, lazy and bitter. And their conflict is in her seeing what's truly inside of him and being frustrated at seeing him missing out on his potential and not being the best that he can be and challenging him directly. And in the book, there's a lot of um, indirect uh, discussion about Laurie choosing him, him easily getting lost in the pleasures of life. We see him being indulgent and frivolous and careless and sending bouquets to girls that he doesn't actually care about just because he likes to flirt. And, you know, we see that in him and, and Amy challenges it directly and he, and, and that bond that we get with them, we don't get in the movie. Instead, in the movie, they show a much more direct him kind of unraveling in a much more in your face way, which I understand why they needed to go that way, but I do think that it detracts from their relationship and detracts from um, how intimate and close their bond was. It makes it feel far more abrupt whenever he tells her not to marry the man that she's uh, considering getting engaged to. And then whenever he kisses her and goes away with her and they get married quickly and it all feels very like, very, very abrupt, and I think it takes away from the intimate relationship that they built together, the intimate friendship that they built together before it turned into something more. However, I do think that the movie then, after they are married and they all come together, I do think that it does show really well how close they are and just that very short window that we get of them married and of her holding her baby. It's, I see the love between them and it, it makes up for it for me. Another change that I didn't like is Joe rushing off to declare her love to Lori and then, oh, it's too late, he's already married, but Joe won't step between them because her love for them is far stronger than her need to have this romance with someone that she let go and he's the one that got away. And I don't like that. That's not in the book. She doesn't do it. In the book, from beginning to end, she knows that Lori and her would not suit and she doesn't want it and she doesn't waver. And there's a time where she is wishing for more and realizing that she's feeling lonely and maybe there, maybe she does want to have someone to love and to love her back. But even then she says, Lori's not it. <laughs> and I don't love that the movie had her be disappointed by losing him, but then like getting over it, which her, her getting over it makes sense. I totally believe that because her love for Amy and her desire for the, the two to be happy is stronger than her desire to be with him. Totally get that one. But I don't, it just, I don't, we need it. We didn't need it. Now to the final change, the biggest change in the story, and that's in Joe's entire arc and in how the whole story ends. And I love it. So this was a bold move and could have gone so wrong and I think it went so right. So there's this quote that uh, a lot of people I think are aware of and that's that the author of the book, 
Louisa May Alcott um, actually wanted Jo to grow up to be a literary spinster and she didn't want to marry her off. And what the movie chose to do was to kind of mash together Joe's story and Louisa's story. And they made Joe a stand-in for the author of the book. And Joe, as she's writing her stories and as she's submitting them and her editor is saying, no, she needs, the woman in the story needs to either at the end be dead or married. You can't have her be a spinster. And so she changes her stories to suit. And, and in the book, Joe and uh, Mr. Bear, they have this uh, very slow romance where from the very beginning she's interested in him, but it doesn't quite work. They don't know how to communicate with each other. They keep missing each other, keep missing each other's signals, but their love for each other grows and grows and grows until finally it just bubbles over and they realize that they love each other and they're so excited to live their lives together and they open a school for boys together after, Miss, after um, Aunt Marsh dies and leaves the house house to her and Joe is so excited to do this and it's this it's it's the thing right and the book the movie almost laughs at that ending a little bit and takes this they don't build up the relationship with Mr. Bear which I understand because they don't just they decide not to keep that and they have this big extravagant hallmark sort of ending for her and him her chasing him in the rain and running off to declare her love for him which the scene in the book is different, but it's just as extravagant, so I'm fine with it. Um, or it's similarly extravagant. And that's the ending of the book. But in reality, Jo didn't have that ending for her heroine. But because the editor says she has to end up married, Jo says, fine, I'll change the story for you, but I'm gonna get paid for it. It's gonna be worth it for me. And Jo goes on living the life that she said she always wanted, which is one where she gets to live her stories and live for herself and her family. But she chooses not to be married. And I really like this choice because it feels like such a nod to the author that's still honoring the story itself. Basically, Louisa May Alcott couldn't have the ending that she wanted for Joe. So the movie gave that to her while also honoring the author Intel. It, it was like they told Joe's story the way Alcott wanted it, but they also told, told Alcott's story, which I think is actually really, really beautiful. Now, how was it as an adaptation? I always say that an adaptation for an, an adaptation doesn't have to be one to one to be a good adaptation. Changes are going to happen and they're necessary and it can be a great thing for changes to happen. What a what an adaptation needs to be in order to be good is for it to tell the core of what the story was, the, the, the life of the story, what it was meant to be, what the, what the author was trying to say, was it said in the movie? And I don't necessarily think the movie fully succeeded at that. I think that the movie captured the beauty and the charm and the life of this story so, so well. And a lot of the changes they made, I loved. But what is Little Women? It is, like I said at the beginning, these young, imperfect, flawed girls growing and having real life experiences and we do the day to day with them and we watch them grow up and we live the lessons alongside them and we, and we see them become little women. So for Meg, that's her as a young girl wishing for more money, wanting to be able to have the nice things and to um, have the extravagance and, and just wanting more for her life and having an eye for more expensive fine things. And through these little life lessons with her husband and with, um, the, with the silks that she buys and then ends up trading for her husband's coat and with the conversation she has with her husband with John, 
saying, I just can't bear to be married to a poor man. I just can't bear to be a poor woman who can't afford the niceties in life that my friends can. And her feeling so much shame at saying that to the man who's working so hard for her. And, and then her learning to be content in what she has and to love the life she has and to make the most of, of what they have and, and creating a life together with him instead of expecting him to give her a life. All of that is her character arc. And while it is heavily condensed and in my opinion pushed down in the movie, it's there. Amy's story is a frivolous and selfish child. She wants to buy limes so that she can trade them with her school friends, which isn't in the movie, but it it's the significant part. It's funny. I love it. She wants to marry rich so that she can just have everything that she wants. She's ruled by her temper and when uh, when Joe won't let her do what she wants, she burns her novel, which is in both. And she, she makes these very mean-spirited choices that are very selfish and vindictive sometimes. And she's the baby of the family. She's the one that doesn't care for Beth like the others do, even though she does. She loves Beth, but she isn't. She doesn't nurse her like the others do when she's ill. She isn't called on when she's off because uh, they, they can take care of Beth and because they know that that's not the role that she naturally takes on. Um, she's, this, she's this frivolous, selfish child and her growth comes a lot from from Lori and in seeing how he's wasting his potential and her challenging him and, and finding her own potential. And once she and Lori marry, and she did marry Rich, not for the wealth, she chose, she chose to deny a man who was more wealthy than Lori and who would have given her more extravagance and more frivolous opportunities. She denied him for love for Lori. Lori also happens to be rich, but instead of being self-indulgent, she says that she wants to be able to spend some of this money that they have giving to others. And her arc is giving up extravagance for less, and then in that less saying, I'll take less even still and give to people who need more than me. We don't get that full arc in the movie. We don't get to see her fully come around to giving so much to others, even in the way uh, when when they come home and they see Joe and she says, I didn't tell you because I thought you would be disappointed, so I just did it. And that was a real burst of selfishness, that little speech. It didn't make her look very good and that's not how it goes in the book and we don't get to see her full arc in the movie. For Beth, again, I think that they depicted her arc perfectly. No complaints, no notes. For Joe, they completely changed her arc. She goes from being this roguish, roguish, wild child that doesn't want to be a young prim lady, that doesn't want to live among society. She wants to just romp around with her friends. She wants to write her stories. She doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want any of these grown up things. She just wants to enjoy her life as it is and just be herself. And in the book, slowly, her hard edge is smooth out and she, uh, she, without even really realizing it or wanting it or knowing it, turns into more of a proper lady by the standards of, of society. And uh, she finds herself wanting to love and to be loved and wanting that husband and children and falling in love and still being fully herself, completely authentically Joe, but a Joe that she thought that she wanted to reject, but it turns out she embraces both sides of that. And there, I wanna be really clear, there's nothing wrong with that arc. In fact, Joe's arc in the book looks really similar to my arc um, as a person, my growing up experience. So I don't want to say that Joe's arc in the book of smoothing out those hard edges, finding love, choosing family, choosing to be married, nothing's wrong with that but it wasn't the story that Alcott wanted to tell. And I like that the movie embraced Alcott's ending, but it did change Joe's main conflict of not wanting to grow up. And instead of her having an arc where she changes and grows, instead she um, stubbornly holds on to those dreams and chooses to continue to be fully what she wants, which is a writer, and to not be married and to live her life for her family and for her stories and for herself. And that also, there's nothing wrong with that ending. Both endings for her are great. But the core of what this book is, is these children growing to be little women. And we get to live those lessons 
alongside them. And the movie did not capture that just right. With not having the linear um, timeline, with not giving us a full character arc for Amy, though I do think that it was fine. I love Amy's depiction in the movie. I'm not too fussed over it. And with giving us a completely different char character arc for Joe, I don't think that the movie perfectly um, does what the book was trying to do. But honestly, it's close enough. And the choices that they made for, especially for Joe, I really love why they did it. And I think they did it so well. I think that this movie captured the charm of the story, the charm of these of this beautiful, um, close, tight-knit, loving family, the relationship with Lori and the girls. It did amazingly. The charm of this story Story and of just growing up with them, living life with them, and seeing them grow and change is incredible. And I think that the movie did an incredible job of, of doing it. And while there are changes that the movie made that made it so that it didn't ad adapt some of the very core of what the book is, it still worked. <laughs> it still was amazing. And so even though my thing is, did you capture the heart of what the story was? And I think that the movie did in some ways and didn't in others. I still think it's probably my favorite adaptation I've ever seen. And in fact, I like the movie better than the book. I've read the book twice. I adore this story. I I love these girls and, and, and every character in the book. I love this story so much. I like the movie better. I think that I think that it portrays the book beautifully, makes the cuts where it should. There are a couple changes I don't like, but whatever. It's there's so many changes that I love. And I think that both stories, while they have very different endings, both endings are beautiful and I love them both. But I like the movie a little bit more. And I uh I really like even I really like the way the characters are portrayed in the movie. I just think it's lovely. There are some changes I would make if it were up to me. I would give Amy, I would finish out her arc in the way that the book did, which I really don't think would take but a few extra lines. Um, there are a couple of changes, like I really don't like Joe rushing after Lori in the movie. Um, a couple of small little nitpicks, but honestly, I'm so happy. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever loved an adaptation like I love this one. I've been sitting here for too long. I'm gonna stop. That is all of my rambly thoughts about the adaptation for Little Women. I think it was brilliant. I loved it so much. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you enjoy the adaptation? Have you read the book? Do you love the book? What are some of the changes that you liked or didn't like? I would love to talk to you, talk with you more about this. Um, I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I post uh, vlog videos on the second channel on Thursdays. I'll see you again soon. Bye.